Welcome to the Knoxville College 2022 Virtual Commencement Ceremony. We want to honor and celebrate the efforts of our graduates through this virtual ceremony. Thank you all who are here with us and those who are viewing this service. We are thankful that you have joined us today to show your support for our graduates on this very special day. I will now call the commencement to order and call on Reverend Sam Brown to give us the invocation. Good morning. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for this day as we celebrate the commencement of individuals into the rest of their lives. God, we thank you for the light that is Knoxville College and the darkness that it drives away. Bless us with your holy presence on today that all will be done in a spirit of excellence and unto your glory. This we ask in the mighty name of our Savior. Amen. At this time, I call on Trustee Jessica Thrasher Wilson, our Chairwoman of the Knoxville College Board of Trustees, to bring you greetings from Maryland, D.C. this morning. Hello, I'm Jessica Thrasher Wilson. I'd like to begin by thanking Lieutenant Governor McNally, Senators Briggs and Massey, State Representative McKenzie, Mayor Ken Cannon, City Council members, Knox County Mayor Jacobs, and Knox County Commissioners. We are grateful for your continued support and partnership with Knoxville College. IP Adams, thank you for allowing me to address our graduates today, and thank you esteemed members of faculty and staff, proud parents, devoted friends and family members, and to the children that are watching and being inspired by their graduating parents. Congratulations to you all, and especially to the magnificent Knoxville College graduating class of 2022. It is a privilege to be here at Knoxville College, which has produced notable graduates that have gone on to be successful educators, scientists, doctors, entrepreneurs, military officers, senior government officials, and that's just the women. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Knoxville College has alumni that were drafted by the National Football League. How timely is it to mention that since the drafts were last week? Over two decades ago, almost three, I too received my bachelor's degree from Knoxville College. Today, I stand before you representing the Knoxville College Board of Trustees as your chairperson. And like many of the Knoxville College leadership, faculty, and staff, in addition, I am fulfilling a dual role to support the college. I am also the vice president of my local KC alumni chapter, the DC, Maryland, Virginia chapter known as the DMV, not the Department of Motor Vehicles. Graduates, this is your commencement day. By definition, commence means to begin or start. But why is the end of a school year called commencement? Why? Because you have completed your educational requirements and you are about to start something new. I am sure each of you have goals. Completing your associate's degree was your near-term goal. This is just the beginning. Keep going. Don't stop with just an associate's degree. The sky is not the limit anymore. I urge you as graduates today to continue to set goals and keep striving toward your goals. Each day, look in the mirror and tell yourself, I got this. Then pursue your day with confidence 
as if you own the world. No one gave you this degree. Like The Weeknd said, y'all know what I'm about to say, you earned it. My advice to you today are two things. Number one, when opportunity knocks, answer the door and go through it, even if it feels uncomfortable. Brief story, two years ago, if someone told me that I'd be addressing you today as a Knoxville College Chair of the Board of Trustees, I would not have believed it. But when the knock came on the door in the form of a cell phone call from the past chair, Dr. Michael B. Bowie, I stepped up and out of my comfort zone to help Knoxville College. Number two, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. This is a favorite quote of mine from the first black elected Congresswoman and the first woman of color to run for president of the United States, Congresswoman Shirley Anita Chisholm. Congratulations Knoxville College class of 2022 and congratulations to my cousin Kia Yerudia amongst the graduates today. Also another college graduate obtaining his associate's degree, my son, Marcus Jr. God bless Knoxville College and God bless our nation. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker and guest performer is none other than Grammy nominated songwriter, Alvin Garrett. Not only is Mr. Garrett an accomplished musician and a songwriter, he is a successful business owner, a master strategist, and an inspiring voice of inspiration through his music. In addition to a Grammy nomination, Garrett has won a Soul Train Award, a Dove Award, and a Stellar Award. This Alabama born and raised preacher's son was woven over 20 years of diverse experiences in the entertainment industry with a common thread of hope and inspiration. Garrett's personal and professional model says, because of hope, I have the inspiration to pursue what I love at the risk of loss. You can't get on the hill if you're afraid to take an L. Alvin Garrett is no stranger to the city of Knoxville. Having frequently performed here for over a decade with his amazing band, Just A Few Cats. Many people say that Garrett's voice and songs are reminiscent of soul music legend Sam Cooke and Al Green. This honorable comparison began in 2015 after the release of his soul riveting song, By Myself, which he will perform for you shortly. Garrett now serves as the executive vice president at Dannon Project, which is one of the nation's leading re-entry and training to work agencies serving multiples at risk populations. Silence behind the music and charitable work, Alvin Garrett serves as a master strategist offering innovative solutions as a consultant to businesses, politicians, and other performing artists. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to bring you live from Birmingham, Alabama, the one and only, you see another one, he's a phony, this Grammy nominated artist, Alvin Garrett. Thank you, IP Adams, for that wonderful introduction. Everybody, I want you to listen closely to the words of this song. I've been rejected way too many times in my life. I won't take no for an answer anymore. Seems all these walls been erected to stop my dreams. Yeah. But I won't let that be a factor anymore. If you won't stay with me, if you won't go with me, I'm gonna go on by myself. If you won't fight with me, if you won't believe with me, I'm gonna walk on by myself. I've got this burning fire deep in my soul, and I can't escape 
this lonely, lonely flame. My journey may go down an old rugged road, yeah, but I keep on pressing, cause I'm not afraid anymore. So if you won't stay with me, if you won't go with me, I'm gonna go on by myself. If you won't fight with me, if you won't leave with me, I'm gonna walk on by myself. Listen, I can see clearly now. My future's my responsibility. Now I'm lost, and if nobody helps carry my cross, I still gotta go. If you won't stay with me, if you won't go with me, I'm gonna go on by myself. Oh, 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 oh. If you don't fight with me, if you don't believe with me, I'm gonna walk on by myself. I'll go by myself. If you won't stay with me, if you won't go with me, By myself, yeah. Uh, and if you won't believe with me, I'm gonna walk on. Yeah, yeah. I might have to walk on by myself. Thank you, thank you. To IP Adams, Vice President Dr. Daisha Lundy, and the Knoxville College Board of Trustees, and everyone watching this morning, I like to say thank you. Thank you for the esteemed honor to be a part of this magnificent occasion. Most of all, congratulations to each of you graduating today. And as the song that I just performed alludes, each and every person, each and every one of us has a calling or a special purpose in our lives. Whether or not we're aware of it or whether or not we believe it. it sort of makes me think of the story of Gideon, which is one of my favorite Bible stories. Now, in summary, Gideon was told by the angel of the Lord that he was a mighty man of valor and that he would be the one to deliver his people from the hands of the enemy and that he would do it as one man, as one man. Now that sounds great and all, but Gideon's self-perception did not align with the declaration of the angel. He made sure to let that angel know that he was from the weakest clan, and that he was the weakest or the lowest in the lowest clan. Now, have you ever looked at yourself in your situation and felt unqualified, inadequate uh, for your calling or your purpose? Well, I'll go ahead and admit it. I felt that way myself at times. And, uh, but I'll tell you, just like Gideon, I still had to move forward anyhow, and so do you. And as we move forward towards our calling, our purpose, our dreams, we're going to have to fight some battles. Now, when it came to Gideon and his battle, he was never told by the angel that he needed an army to do what he was destined to do. He said it would be done as one man, one woman, one person. But because of his fear and his doubt, he made a few missteps and misjudgments along the way. <laughs> First, he took talkers to his altar. Now, in this story, Gideon was told to build an altar and take two bulls to get it done but he took 10 men. <laughs> now I know for a fact that bulls don't talk. So it had to be one of those 10 men running that mouth that led to a full blown battle against the enemy. And in your life, it's those talkers that could lead to a full blown war against your destiny. So don't take talkers to your altar. Some dreams are meant not to be posted. Secondly, he invited the masses into his battle. Now I know we live in a society that is social media driven, where amassing followers and likes and engagement is a treasured accomplishment. And somehow, the more friends you have, the more important, better yet, the more empowered you feel. But here's the catch. Just like Gideon's 32,000 followers, you may have a lot of followers that aren't quite willing or ready 
to go with you into the heat of battle. Now, that's right. 32,000 people showed up for Gideon's call to war. And uh, 22,000 were told to go home when asked, were they afraid? So I ask you this. How do you, like Gideon, determine who's really with you or not? You got to do like Gideon and send all the fearful people home. Send them away because the first disqualifier for the battles of life is fear. Now hear me loud and clear. You cannot achieve success when you are surrounded by fearful and doubtful people or if you yourself are driven by fear. Have you ever felt like people around you always got 22,000 reasons why you shouldn't start that business or why you shouldn't go to Knoxville College? Why you shouldn't do what you want to do or worse than that? Why you shouldn't be who you've been called to become. So just like Gideon, send those 22,000 excuses or fearful people as far away from you in your life's battles as you possibly can. Next, now that you're comfortable and your circle seems tight with the remaining 10,000, I have to ask you this, can they pass the thirst test? The thirst test. You see, Gideon was feeling real good with 10K by his side, but were they really truly ready? They weren't fearful, but were they focused? So there were 9,700 people when led to the water that dropped their heads and lapped like dogs. Now, I ask you this, are you or those around you distracted by your needs, your desires, those thirst traps? Or will you be disciplined enough to keep your head up while handling the affairs of life? Sometimes you simply got to say, not right now. I'm busy. I'm busy chasing this dream. I'm busy chasing my goals. I'm busy doing life. And are you busy doing it with me? If not, I got to send you home. And I might have to go on by myself. Lastly, when you're left standing with your 300, that could be 300 fearless and disciplined alumni of Knoxville College. Or maybe that could be 300 dedicated and supported family members and real friends. Uh, but here's the deal. Even with those 300, you will still have to deal with yourself. Because remember, you really don't have to have the 300. You can do this as one man, one woman, one person by yourself. But are you afraid? Are you still seeing yourself as the lowest of the low from the lowest of places? Or are you uh, still seeing the molehills as mountains that you can't see yourself climbing? Well, if there's any doubt left, let me be your Pura. You see, Pura was Gideon's servant who went with him amongst his enemies to hear what they had to say. So let me be your servant today. And let me go with you into your near future where your enemies are talking and dreaming about you. So listen close. They're afraid of your arrival. They've seen it. They've seen you. They know that your excellence will expose their laziness. They know that your passion will be the fire that burns through all the tricks and traps they've set for you. They know that your determination will drive you through the darkest nights into your brighter days. Most of all, they had that dream. And in that dream, they saw that God was on your side. And when God be for you, who can be against you? <laughs> now, let's bring it on back, just like Gideon. After learning that his enemies agreed with his angels, he realized that as one man, success is inevitable. And that's the same for you today. Success is inevitable if you simply believe that everything you need is already in you and you alone. Now, we all know that together we can achieve more. But unless those around you are fully focused and free of fear, you're not truly together. Just because someone's around you doesn't mean that they're really with you. Remember that, just as Gideon so eloquently learned. So now is your moment, your moment, the moment for you to believe in what I'm saying to you today, which I'm sure you've heard at some point in your journey with this great institution of higher learning, Knoxville College. Listen, you can do this. 
you can do it. The power is already in you as one man, one woman, one person. There's no dream that you can't achieve if you believe that you are worthy enough, fearless enough, determined enough, and bold enough to chase. And lastly, this is your moment to say to the world, <laughs> those 22,000 scared folk, those 9,700 distracted folk, and even your 300 supporters. If you won't stand with me, if you won't go with me, hmm, I might have to go on by myself. Thank you for this opportunity to be with you today. Congratulations once again. And I'll see you in your future. President Adams, on behalf of my esteemed colleagues on the faculty of Knoxville College, I have the pleasure of presenting to you these candidates who have completed all of the requirements for the Associates of Arts degree in general studies. Candidates, upon the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Knoxville College and by the state of Tennessee, I hereby confer upon you the degree of an Associates of Arts with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. It is my pleasure to present you with your degree. Shalanzia Booker of Nacross, Georgia. Concentration in Social Sciences. Kia Eurisha of Fort Pierce, Florida, concentration in natural science. Congratulations to both of you. Now we will hear a few words from one of our graduates, Shalanzia Booker. I'm excited to stand before you and share my experience at Knoxville College over the last two years. I started Knoxville College in the fall of 2020 to advance my education to help me accomplish my personal goals of getting back on track to getting my bachelor's degree and becoming an entrepreneur. The skills and knowledge that Knoxville College has provided me will help me successfully transition to Tennessee State University in the fall, where I plan to receive a bachelor's degree in liberal arts. My experience at Knoxville College has been excellent. I can honestly say that all of my professors, administrators have made me feel very comfortable at Knoxville College, probably more comfortable than I would have been at any other college. I am very proud to be a part of Knoxville College's rebirth story, and I'm excited to see what the future has in store for myself and Knoxville College. Let there be light. Graduates, your degree today is the culmination of hard work and perseverance, and you should be proud of your accomplishments. You have now become an alumnus of Knoxville College, joining thousands of successful alumni who have made their mark on the world. Represent Knoxville College well in all of your future endeavors. Speak kindly and highly of us. And please send us students just like you. At this time, I call on Trustee Brenda Gardner, President of the Knoxville College National Alumni Association to officially induct you. Hello. Congratulations to each of you today, class of 2022. You have much to be proud of. Now I will read the covenant. The class of 2022 do hereby agree to covenant with one another and with the other alumni of Knoxville College. The class pledges to maintain her standards of personal integrity and an intellectual competence and to uphold her traditions of unselfish service to mankind. 
to handle every challenge with dignity and fortitude and to contribute liberally of our substance to her upbuilding and support. Please repeat after me. I do hereby accept my role as a Knoxville College alum. I do hereby accept my role as a Knoxville College alum. Once again, Congratulations, class of 2022, for this amazing accomplishment. Thank you. I'd like to take this time to introduce you to our better half here at Knoxville College of the Adams Lundy administration. She hails from the east side of Knoxville, Tennessee, just five foot one, but she brings a mighty sword. She's a warrior of peace and a warrior of pain. She's none other than my right hand, Dr. Dacia Lundy. I am honored to present the distinguished Nassau College alumni who are being recognized for completing their program of study 50 years ago and have been great ambassadors to their alma mater through their service and accomplishments in their respective fields. This indeed is a great day in the life of this institution as we recognize our alumni. Today we honor, recognize, celebrate our honor class of 1972. I want you to know that your alma mater is so proud of you, of your accomplishments, reflecting the training, mentoring, and nurturing you received as student many years ago. Your success, success and reflects the mission, vision, and values this institution continues to hold dear as we carry on those worthy traits and characteristics. Please listen to the rendition of the college hymn by Knoxville College alumni, Michael Rogers. Close to our hearts, dear old KC, shall ever be thy memory. We love thy dear old halls. We love thy trees and verdant hills, thy deep-toned bells whose Thy consecrated walls Deep in our hearts forevermore Thy dear old name shall be And as the silent years go by, we'll live for thee, Graduates, special guests, and those viewing, 2022 has been another tough year for most of us, probably all of us, and for Knoxville College as well. 
but our light still shines on the hill at 901 Knoxville College Drive. The long history of 147 years, we are calling on our ancestor to help push us through. We have made some strides and we are continuing to walk the path to revitalizing Knoxville College and continue to educate young minds so that they make a difference in the world. I wanna thank these individuals for attending our two-year virtual learning program. This shows the hard work that we have done and what they have done. Continue to make your mark on the world. And again, remember dear old KC. At this time, I call on Pastor Daryl Arnold to close our ceremony with prayer. My many thanks to you. Please be safe and remember, take the light of Knoxville College with you as you depart. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you for this day. You said in your word that this is the day that you have made, that we have reasons to rejoice and to be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, not only just for the opportunity to be in your presence, but to be in the presence of this, this great institution and these great people and these great students. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in their lives, how, Lord, you've been with them as they journeyed through their academic accomplishments, they fulfilled all of their academic endeavors. But Lord, we know this, this is not the end, it's just the beginning. So now, Lord, I pray that you would anoint them to be able to move forth into their purpose, that they, oh God, would be faithful to every step, that they would take all of the things that they've learned and apply them, them, them to their lives. I pray, Lord, that they would be blessed in their family, in their finances, in their physical bodies, but more than anything, Lord, that they would be blessed in their faith. Remind them that they are the head and not the tail, above and never beneath, that the lenders and not the borrowers. Remind them that they are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and that they should love not their lives even unto death. In Jesus' name, amen.